Hey, hello, everyone. It's great to be with you. Uh, very excited to be in the Orange Bowl. Uh, they say this is one of the most prestigious and uh, historic games in the history of our bowl games. I remember, I always remember as a child on the last day of New Year's Eve, I mean, on New Year's Day of uh, at 8 o'clock when the Orange Bowl, having that last game when you watched them all all day and you finished with the Orange Bowl and had the great halftime shows and the great Oklahoma teams, the great uh, Nebraska teams that used to play in it all the time, Florida State, where I actually first saw Florida State when they played Oklahoma, loved them. Uh, the great Miami game was all those games in the history. And to be a part of it again, been able to be blessed to be able to do it twice. It's one of the most um, well-ran, classy games that you can be a part of. Uh, very excited for A&M to be back uh, 77 years ago. I'll have to ask my mom. Uh, she's 84, so I'll have to ask her if she remembers that and uh, see if that's okay. Uh, I don't quite remember that. I'm up getting up there. I'm not quite that old. I'm not that old yet. But uh, great to be back. Great to, you know, get A&M brand across the country and be in any other games and uh, be in the Orange Bowl and the Classic and be a part of that great history and tradition is is a great honor. We're very happy and excited to be in the game and play a, a great opponent in North Carolina. And uh, like I say, having Mac Brown, who I, you know, I think is one of the great coaches in college football and probably end up being a Hall of Fame coach and uh, won his national championships in what, 250, 60 games, wherever many he's won. Uh, great guy, great opponent. He's done a tremendous job with North Carolina to get them in the Orange Bowl and how quick he was there and how what that program was when he took over. It's, a, it's an amazing accomplishment. Again, but it doesn't surprise you. Everywhere Mac goes, he wins. And that's going to be a very well-coached football team who's playing great football and had a great win down there against Miami just a few weeks ago to put him in it. And uh, now we're going to have our hands full. We need to play a great game. But we're excited and blessed to be there and uh, looking forward to finishing this season. Questions? All right, we'll go ahead and we'll start with Tim Reynolds again. Go ahead, Tim. Jimbo, I, I would say congratulations, but it just seems so awkward today. And having been at both of your Orange Bowls, having heard you talk about them in the past, I know what the game is here. Well, it's – what is the level of frustration today, Jimbo, that you're feeling? I mean, there's is no it, frustration. Is it, we're excited I mean, to be going to the Orange Bowl. Listen, we're in a New Year's Six game. We're in a New Year's Six game against a great opponent, and we're very happy to be there, and there's no frustration at all. Max said that he thought that you guys belonged in the playoff. How, how appreciative, I guess, were you to hear, hear, him, hear him share that sentiment? Well, especially from somebody who knows football as well as Mac does, and one of the great coaches. But you know that that's that's this world we live in. I mean, you get in, you get out, and you got to move on. You go to the future, and listen, we got an opportunity to play in the Orange Bowl. That's one of the, like I said, one of the great games of uh, of uh, bowl games in the history of this game, and uh, having the tradition to be another part of that game and play a great opponent like North Carolina and have Mac as a, one of the great coaches in college football. I think it's a great matchup for us, and it's a great opportunity for us to continue to grow and build our brand and build our program to where we want it to go. Thank you, Jimbo. All Thank right. You. Next question is from Chuck Carlton. Go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, Jimbo, I know, I know you've moved on, but I know some of your players expressed and your staff even expressed disappointment with the uh, coming in fifth to CFP. I was just curious your thoughts about that, how that played out the last 24 hours. Well, no, it wasn't. It, it's like having a bad play. You get disappointed for a minute and then you play the next play. I mean, you move on. That's that's life. We've had a great opportunity. We've had a great year. We've had we've done great things, and we put ourselves in a position to be in it. But we weren't. So now it's time to move on. And we're not. Uh, you know, you wanted to be in it, but at the same time, we're in the Orange Bowl, man. We can progress, keep going, doing what we're doing, and everybody does that. But our players are moving on. They were excited when we announced that we were able to play in the Orange Bowl. They were very excited, knowing that A and M hadn't been there, and I couldn't tell them how many years. Now I know it's seventy seven. I know it's pre World War Two, <laughs> so uh, or somewhere in that range, right in there. So it was pretty good. All right, next question is from Sam Kahn. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Jimbo. I'm curious if you had any power, any say in it, would you, what would you change, if anything, about the selection process in the college football playoff? Oh, I, I mean, listen, you got great people on who do a great job. Hey, you can complain about every selection that's made. It's like, all right, who, who complains about every call I make? Well, we should have ran the ball. We should have thrown the ball. We should have done this. We should have done that. We should have. I mean, that, that's life. I mean, I have no, they, those people do a great job. They spend all year doing it. They gather the information. They do one heck of a job and they came to conclusion and did it. I wouldn't change anything. Okay. Next question is Zach Braziller. Go ahead, Zach. Jimbo, uh, Mac had just talked about expanding the playoffs to six teams to eight teams. What are your thoughts on that? And this year, you've seen a lot of other sports kind of with all the uncertainty going on, adding teams to the playoffs to, you know, for fan engagement. Would that have been something you think would have been a smart decision for college football? 
You know, I said this and I said it the other day, and it's not because we were fifth right now, but I think the playoff does need to get expanded because you're not encompassing all the conferences. You're not encompassing all the things. And listen, you can't, it's hard to judge strength of schedule. You're not crossing over who you're playing, what you're playing, getting a non power five team in there to a power five team. There's so many things. The only way you're going to find out is expand the playoffs. Now, I'm a traditionalist, and I never thought I would ever say that. I really didn't because I love the bowl games, the history. I think it took away from the nostalgia of our game. And then what orange bowl means, what the sugar bowl means, what the fiesta bowl means, what the cotton bowl means, what the peach bowl means, what the uh, old blue bonnet bowl. I mean, whatever they are. I mean, although all those games, I'm a true traditionalist in that. But I just think today's times and the changes we've made, I never thought it would come out of my mouth like this, but we do. And I think it matters to kids, matters to people. And there's no because there's no easy way to judge this thing and get it as fair. And it may not always be, but I think if you expand it more and include the bowl games in it, I think you have to going in the future. And I I truly believe it's got to happen. Our next question for Jeff Snook. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Jimbo, just if you look at the history of college football back to 98, the top two teams of BCS, now the last six playoff uh, years, the, the one team that was fifth or third that got left out, they went one of two ways. They were flat, their heads were somewhere mm-hmm. else, were disappointed, or they were extremely motivated and took it out on the other team. How do you keep your team in the latter as opposed to the former there? You know, I hope we're neither. I don't hope we're motivated. I don't hope we're we're mad. I hope we're doing our job as a football team and what we want to do and accomplish as a program because that's what we do at A&M. It's to play great football when the next game steps up, whatever the circumstances, whatever the consequences. You always create – you can create a chip on your shoulder. You can create all – but if those are the real reasons you have to motivate yourself to play, your program's not where it needs to be. I believe that. I think it's the next game. It's the next play. It's the next situation, whatever it may be, you handle it and move on because that's what you do as a human being and you move on in life. I don't, I know, hopefully we're neither one. I hope we're just ready to play a very good North Carolina football team is a very well coached team. I have a lot of respect for and that we do our job and play our best game. All right. Next question for Andrew Jones. Go ahead, Andrew. You there, Andrew? All right, well, we'll move some. We'll go uh, next question here for Travis Brown. Travis, you there? Yeah, hey, Coach. Just just curious, um, with, with what a lot of your players said on, on social media and stuff, a lot of it felt they felt like A&M's brand, A&M's name is what held them out over Notre Dame. How do you address that and have those conversations with your players to kind of uh, – give them a, a, a different perspective on, on the program after what happened. I don't. That's, that's what they say on social media. That's their belief. You want, you want your brand to be better, play better, do what you handle, handle your business. I don't, I mean, I, I don't get into all those things. I don't believe in all those things. We're going to play our game, do what we do and handle our business. We have a great brand. A&M is a tremendous brand and we're building it each and every day. We'll have we'll be consistency in the things we do and how we play. And that's what you can handle, control what you can control and move on. I really don't. I don't know what they said on social media because I don't have it. <laughs> and, it, and then also Coach Brown said that y'all had some time. We had some time to be able to bond when he was doing the TV analyst stuff. What was some of that relationship building like between the two of you? It was actually really fun because you got an old coach who really understood what you're going through and what goes on. And no offense to anybody in the media, but understanding and have some deep conversations and really understand what you were doing and where your team was and why you're doing things. And I thought he did a great job as an Max, a very intelligent guy, always has been successful in everything he's done. It was very, very fun being around him. I enjoyed Mac. Uh, still, like I say, I still consider him a friend. I said we haven't been around a lot, but you know, occasionally we'll text each other, see a message or something like that. And, and I, I think he does an outstanding job. But it was very fun to to be around Mac. He was very bright, and like I say, he got to have some deep conversations about ball. And you don't always get to go into that detail. No offense to a lot of announcers, but he's an ex ball coach, so you, you know you had some great conversations to go there. All right, next question for Tyler Shaw. Coach, uh, did you even surprise yourself at all as, I mean, third year here, did you think before this year started you guys would be in this situation, a fifth-ranked team and playing in the Orange Bowl? I thought we had an opportunity to. It just a matter of how quick we could focus and, and stay attention to detail and eliminate clutter and play play our game. I mean, you know, we expect to be good every time we play, and hopefully it could have even been sooner than that. But we had things in position, and our guys have done a great job. They've bought in, and our coach, our assistant coaches have done a tremendous job, our support staff. Everybody here at AM, the administration's given us things we need to do to be successful, and our players have done one heck of a job.
this is a tremendous football team with great leadership who has done a great job with our young players, old players, and, and sending the message and selling the message of what we do, and especially doing this year with so much turmoil going through and so much change in our life and so much up and down. It's remarkable what they've done, but it doesn't surprise me because, it, listen, people are amazing when they want to be. When there's an urgency to do things, it's amazing what people can do. We've had the ability, and, they, and they've, they've, they're doing it now. All right. Thanks. Next question for Chris Heidel. Hey, Jim Bell, it's Chris Heidel. How you doing? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Um, just talk about um, going to uh, back to the Orange Bowl, and you actually are playing against North Carolina. You recruited Sam Howell to come to Florida State. What type of quarterback was he when you recruited him before you went off to College State? Well, we started, and then they had, they picked it up. I didn't get in a lot of depth with Sam, but I listen, I had tremendous – he was one heck of a player. Guy can throw it. He can run. And it's amazing. Now, think of the amount of success he's had in two years. I mean, to be able to jump in like he did last year as a freshman, I think he was 35, 36 touchdowns last year. That's – man, I don't care. That, that's hard to do as a senior. Most guys can't do that. I mean, he is a tremendous football, tremendous leader, but he's not the only guy they got to. I mean, they can run the foot. They ran for 500 and some yards last game. But defense, what they, Mac has done there has been amazing. They throw it around. Coordinator does a great job. I know all those guys. Uh, so, I mean, uh, Sam is uh, – but he he's the key to the drill and, and makes them go. And he's made a lot of big plays and going to be a heck of a, a challenge to stop him or try to at least contain him. You're never going to stop him. Thanks, Jim right. Bill. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. All right. We have less than five minutes left. Uh, Jeff, you got another follow-up question? Yeah, I do. Uh, Jim Bill, I hate to go back to this, but just you brought it up yesterday and today just the two teams above you notre dame and ohio state ohio state's got six games played notre dame got beat 34 to 10 which one of those what are you left out for you to go to four? Oh, i have no idea to break it all down and i just felt strong about our players and what we did and listen they made good choices those guys those teams are very deserving they have nothing nothing against that i thought we were deserving and that's what happens when you got Team, a lot of teams are deserving and only so many spots. You have to make a choice. And the committee made a choice. That's their choice. And we'll move on. I don't. I have no idea which one you take out or which one you put in or if you put us in. I just felt strongly about our team and what we have done. I'm very proud of them and what they've accomplished. But I have no idea. I can't answer that. All right, next question for Chuck. Jim Bellows, mm-hmm. just curious with what you've gone through you know, being in that discussion as this played out and being in a New Year's Six Bowl, the Orange Bowl, what does this do for your program in year three and going forward? Well, I think it shows the trajectory we're on, what we're trying to accomplish, that we are being relevant in the national in the national uh, conversations and where we're going. Our brand is becoming a national brand and the things we do, which I think you have to do in today's game. we got a great state here in Texas we want to recruit the heck out of, but we also got to brand ourselves nationally across the board. And I think it sends a sign to players out there that, hey, A&M is on the rise. We're doing the things we need to do to have success. And this is a tremendous program, and hopefully they want to come be a part of it. All right, last question, Jeff. Go ahead. Didn't know my hand was still raised. I apologize. Okay. Uh, there you don't. Uh, okay. Take my hand down. Okay. Sounds good. So it looks like that's all the questions we have. Uh, thanks, Coach Fisher. We, we appreciate it. We'll see you in South Florida in a couple weeks. Thank you, gentlemen. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. Thank you very much.